Hello and welcome to a fine night of TFT here at the Aegis Invitational. The best TFT players from around the world have gathered here to come duke it out for a $1,500 prize pool, and we're going to be able to guide you through all of the action. I am Bo Protroid Lamana. Joining me is Dan FPO Park. Dan, how you doing? Hey, I'm feeling great, Bo. We're coming off some super exciting games in round one with representatives from all around the world. Right? We have people yeah. from EU, NA, OCE, Latin America, and even Taiwan. Right? Yeah, it is a we huge had, uh, smattering. Exactly. We've had 20 high-ranking players that were invited, and 12 open spots were claimed through six different qualifier tournaments. And uh, I've played in a couple of these qualifiers, and they are it is not easy to get top two out of 256. Yeah, so, lots uh, of scary names just all throughout these leaderboards. I'm sure we'll be able to tell plenty of great stories as we go through the day. For now, though, let's focus in a little bit what's going to mean for the folks on stream right now. So far, everyone has already played three games of TFT, each of them looking to qualify for round two. What's going to happen is that they're going to play three more games, and each round they're going to be earning points inverse to where they place. Meaning, you finish first, awesome, that's eight points for you. You finish eighth, that's only going to be one for that round. Top four in each game lobby at the end of those three games are going to move on to day two tomorrow. Exactly. Um, these players have had a strong showing this morning, top three games. Hopefully they can follow that up and rack up those points to qualify for the finals tomorrow. Yeah, it's going to be super exciting to see what happens. And we've been comparing notes, shuffling stuff around, trying to figure out which players that are the ones to watch, the ones that we really want to hone in on. Tell me, Dan, like, who are you looking at sort of going into today? Yeah, the, the player that I have my eye on is Jerry Wu. Um, there is someone that I recognize from climbing NA ladder, um, and I've seen them participate in other tournaments as well. I really like their play style. They play a strong opener, and we saw earlier on, uh, we did talk about this, we don't see a lot of AP players in, uh, in this tournament lobby. And we saw earlier on, they were able to pull out a 6 Arcanus Lux to clutch out a win. And uh, I really, really like that. I think they're a strong player. They're one of my favorites going forward. Uh, what about yeah. you, Bo? Well, yeah, that is an enormous point, and I do want to touch on that AP thing a little bit more if we get the time for it. But for me, I have to say, my heart's been stolen by Purr Purr Purr, which, first of all, that is a phenomenal name. I, I won't be able to skip <laughs> yeah. all those purrs all the time, but I will try to. The better and better they do, I will make an even stronger effort to say it as much as possible. But mm -hmm. they sort of came in with a rough rap. They were going into game four, which was effectively our group of death. You had a lot of pretty scary players in there. Jerry Wu was in there as well and did phenomenally in there. And they managed to get that excellent meat shot, finished third in two games in a row, an eighth in the last game, but we don't talk about that one. We brush it aside. We ignore it. And they've been able to come in here with a decent enough showing to get things going. It's going to be scary. I'm not going to lie. They are an underdog sort of going through all this, but I think they have a ton of potential. For sure. They're definitely a player that we want to keep our eyes on and could be quite the Cinderella, uh, Cinderella story. Yeah. And to speak more about that AP thing, we've been scouring a ton through all of these players' match histories, trying to figure out what they like to do, what they avoid. We see a lot of different AD compositions. We've seen tons of Jins, Urgots, a couple of Jaces coming in recently as well. All yep. that makes sense. But AP seems to be a bit of a blind spot for all these folks. Right, exactly. Um, in different sets, and I, I, I want to say even in some patches this set, uh, it's been pretty easy to play AP, but I feel like as of recently, everybody is just practicing a lot of AP comps. So to yeah. see people that flex effectively into AP comps, um, it's, it's really nice and a little bit rare, I would say. Yeah, on top of that too, it means that we are likely going to see these uncontested AP units, meaning that if someone does decide to spec into it, if they get those perfect items for the Lux, if they manage to luck out and find that early victor, maybe they can do some pretty nutty things. Some of these players have hit some pretty crazy free stars in the past. I'm hoping we see something that crazy coming in here for today. I, I dare not dream that much, but boy, am I excited. For sure. Always love to see those gold units. Um, Heimerdinger is making a little bit of Ooh, a, yeah. a stir up. Yeah, we um, talked so. a lot about Heimerdinger yesterday in terms of like how there aren't that many different AP carries. And it feels like a lot of them are more at that, like, say, lower free cost level, like with Mouse and Heim. Right. And yep. Heimerdinger is starting to give, be given that attention that I think he's always sort of deserved. 
Mm -hmm. He is getting a little bit of traction. We saw in the Zon Cup uh, that certain people were playing Six Scholar Heimer with great success. So maybe we'll see something like that in the tournament here as well. Yeah, on top of that too, we could also see more specs into Lux as we were seeing a little bit earlier on. We also saw some pretty good Malzahar plays. All in all though, the name of the game, it seems for a lot of these players is going to be these more AD focused compositions, which doesn't really right. surprise me. A lot of them are pretty much designed to get you to top four and reliably climb ranked. And that's mm -hmm. going to be the same MO for a lot of these players today. They want to try to make sure that they get these good wins, don't take too many heavy risks, so that way they can make it to tomorrow with the best chances possible. Right, and we should see a lot of skill expression with so many people uh, vying to play AD, um, kind of like how you navigate through that contested field uh, will show you know how strong you are as a player in general. Yeah, Carousel is especially going to be fun too, because I feel like in this AD meta, maybe less so now that we have the bodyguard nerfs, it feels like Bow is always a very high priority in order to go yep. pick up, just because you can go Last Whisper, you can go Rin's Hurricane, you can go, uh, if you were planning on going for something like the uh, Imperial reroll build that we're seeing earlier, you mm -hmm. immediately want to get that Rapid Fire can, just get Talon sort of up and running. Obviously, that's all shifted quite a bit between Imperial nerfs as well as just Last Whisper not being as mandatory anymore. So maybe that will open up some more room for expression, but I think some of these carousels are going to be pretty nutty to watch. Mm -hmm. We did see a Imperial Talon Assassin game mm -hmm. uh, in, I think it was the second game of uh, the first round. Yeah, uh, do that, you remember who was running that, actually? because I believe it was Thre, uh Tactical yes. God, for this tournament, yeah. Uh, it was quite strong. I believe it was a top four. Mm -hmm. uh, so hopefully we'll see so something like that. And uh, Syndicate seems strong as ever. So Yeah, Syndicate was something that was really fun to watch through all of this. I'm really curious to see how players move around it because it is still a strong early game with that Twisted Fate Morello strategy. It can really carry you on pretty, pretty deep into the mid game. And then obviously, find an Akali. You're going to do Akali things. It's going to be absolutely absurd. We are going to be loading in right now to our game, just so you know. So don't worry, you don't have to look at our faces too much longer. We got some good TFT action just coming down the pipe. But yeah, there's so many different options here. A world of possibilities has opened up to us. I I'm excited. I don't know what else to say. Yep. So many skilled players, uh, flexible players as well. So looking forward to some great games. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah, I really just can't believe all these different talent that we've gotten here too. Like we have a lot of high ranking players from across the spectrum. I think our current highest ranked player is from LAN, I believe. Let yep. me just double check really quickly, just to make That's sure I don't correct. mispronounce any names. I believe that is Hyperspace actually. So they've been doing absolutely phenomenally in ladder. They are, I believe, currently at around 1600 LP, ranking them at number one in the region. So that is incredible incredibly powerful and really impressive to see they aren't going to be in this lobby we are going to be starting with game two today they will be playing in game one hopefully we'll get to see what they're doing later on yeah incredibly strong players um ladder doesn't always translate into tournament play but you know they've done well enough to get past round one they had a decent showing as well we'll see if they can keep it up yeah, at this point, in my mind, every single player has proved that they deserve to be here just by virtue of making it to round two. It's just going to be how they choose to play in this, uh, just simply enough, very different environment. Ranked yeah. is a much different animal than competitive play, as I'm sure you can attest to by participating in many of these tournaments. Mm -hmm. Especially with the different regions, I feel like the tempos and the play styles vary a little bit from region to region. So, uh, oh... And we're jumping straight into the game here. It looks like we're loaded up. This Starting is, with uh, Jerry Wu, and Jerry as Wu. predicted, there was that little race for the bow, kind of, with half the lobby just sort of sneaking on over there. Exactly, but my man Jerry going for the tier. I love that. Yeah, we were saying how Jerry was one of the players that was willing to go for that tier. Ooh, really quickly, also got a quick glance at the mutant right there. So Jerry's scouting exactly as they need to going into game one. I love to see that. That's that's what I like, like you mentioned before, right? Uh, maybe a B or an A tier comp. Uh, if it's not contested, it's pretty much an S tier comp, right? You're guaranteed to hit it before other people. So mm -hmm. Hopefully, he's making use of that here. 
Yeah, I hope so too. Tier early as well. It can lead you into some pretty awkward positions. Like if you feel like you're forced to build something like a chalice or also say this uh, frozen heart too that's currently on the bench. But if you can find something like a double tier and just guarantee that early on, that can lead to some pretty scary starts. But so far, so simple. Just going to be playing in the game, seeing what the little minions give us. <laughs> yep. A starting tier, you do love to see the Yodels as well. Gets a Taric before the first augment. That's always really useful in case you get a socialite augment. Unfortunately, though, they don't get to try to see where it goes. Wow, that was really quick. I was going to say, oh, I can finish that point and then we can talk about this augment <laughs> choices. But no, going generic as quickly as possible. Makeshift armor certainly was the play. Yep. Not sure if you caught it there, but he quickly flashed the oh. uh, the Taric. Yep. The uh, socialite spot, it was in the back row, third from the right which is a great spot for Jin, maybe even a Lux comp as well. Yeah, indeed. So it'll be interesting to see how all these players play around that. Now, switching over to Jarity, who has probably in an homage to an earlier patch, immediately slammed that last Whisper. Certainly is still going to be a pretty viable strategy here. Mm -hmm. We've seen kind of last Whisper still be strong, even with the nerfs to Bodyguard. It went from being an item that you must build to an item that's quite strong. And even then, oh. remember, like, even with bodyguards having less armor, Last Whisper's armor reduction means that you're going to be dealing closer to true damage now. So that's still going to be effective as we go through. But I want to talk about this bench. That's a lot of brawlers and bruisers that we got right now. It is. The Alawi parry definitely doesn't want to give up here, but has the trundle as the item holder here. I like that as well. Yeah, even gets to get in the free Chemtech using that Chemtech heart on their Augment too. So all this is going to be pretty huge. I also expect that belt to be slammed down just for a little bit of scrap value if the Ezreal does decide to stay. Mm -hmm. Looks like he's not vying for it now. The This early board is looking quite nice. A Zac early on is very, very strong. And they have the Chemtech Bruiser scrap synergy here, which is really Yeah, nice. but... You know what else is pretty strong early? Swain. He does go down oh, pretty sure. quickly, but does take out the Ezreal before that happens. Yeah, Swain definitely has the potential to, you know, knock out an entire team on his own. Yeah, I think early Chemtech really was a pretty nice saving grace there. Yeah, with the there was a slight nerf, I believe, to three Chemtech in uh, two patches ago, but it mm -hmm. still does feel very strong in the early stages of um, stage two. Yeah, certainly not as strong as it was before where it had ridiculous amounts of resistances, but it is still enough to sort of keep comps going, and now an Ezreal 2 has joined the party. That's nice. I see the two Swains in the shop, Pro. Would you ever go pick that up here as a Swain? That seems like a pretty huge pivot. At the same time, we've seen Swain time and time again historically be a pretty reliable carry sort of going through Stage 3. That said, mm -hmm. all the nerfs that he kind of was faced with, I'm not, I don't have as much confidence. I would totally agree with that. Looks like Jaredy does as well. Indeed. PETA, by the way, looks like they're going to be going for that pretty standard early econ with the Yordles. Actually has also decided to pick up that Enchanter Heart too, so that means they will always be shielding and healing and resisting just a little bit more. Yeah, PETA here is actually another really strong player from LAN. I believe they're a top 15. Mm -hmm. And um, they have the Yordle start, so it's looking to play more of an economy style uh, game. Yeah, will be very important to watch them right now. They are currently coming off of two losses already at 86 health. Yordles is phenomenal for just kickstarting your economy early on, but if you aren't careful, we've seen players spiral quickly losing health when they're trying to stabilize. So we'll have to see how PETA can play around that. Yeah. It gives you such a powerful roll down at let's say three two to stabilize at level six, but you know there are there are games where you just can't hit, and in those cases you you're bound to struggle for the rest of the game. Yeah, the curse of TFT. There always is that little bit of RNG that you got to work out, but hey, that's part of the fun. Xerix here is our other top one hundred player going in right now. Also looking always pretty level strong with the number of two stars. Yeah, at I like that a lot. Yeah, that is mm -hmm. really maintaining a lot of aggression, really wanting to keep that win streak going. Heck, Jarity is barely able to kill one off of this. Yeah, and it's not as common in ladder, but in tournament play, I feel like a lot of players at 2-3 go level 5 to maintain that win streak. It is just so important yeah. to keep up that tournament tempo. 
Yeah, it's enormous. They're also able to maintain that economy just super strong. Remember, if you hit a five-game win streak, that's effectively like having 30 gold in the bank. And so as a result, anything you can do to maintain that, especially in the March to Krugs, is going to be huge. Yeah. Definitely a big play here. We see we see PETA going for a tier here. We'll have to see what Jared is aiming for. Yeah. PETA, remember, is going that Yordle board did have the Twisted Fate, so does have a few good holders for that tier. We'll have to just see what that board does evolve into in the future. Mm -hmm. And kind of going for the bow here does really cement that AD playstyle that we've been mm -hmm. seeing. There's almost no way that they're going to pivot into an AP, AP board from here now. Yeah, at this point, I feel like it just matters where they actually do end up because even despite that Chemtech heart, I feel like there's still a few different directions you can go. Obviously, Urgot is the most appealing because you're like, ooh, the, the trait gets silver and then gold and you can get really deep in there. But you could also see pivots into the Yone or into the Jin if things are dire enough. Yeah, true. And that's the great thing about like the tier one augments here. They are powerful, but if needed, you, you can ignore them. It depends what you hit every game, right? Indeed, indeed. And we have the RFC on the trundle, which is also super good. It's both an offensive and a defensive item here. Just what he yeah, it works out nice. Now, the one thing that I'll say, though, that a little critical of Jared's play is that instead of trying to lose going into Krugs, they've actually leveled here to try to get back into a win streak going into Krugs again. I think I would have liked trying to sort of wait one round before making a determination like that, just because yeah. at this stage, they've now moved up they broke in that streak that they've already had, so they're facing not having any kind of meaningful streak going in here. I, I agree with you on that one. Um, the two win into a three loss would have been all right, but I do think that a lot of players here are just trying to maintain as much HP as possible. Yeah, looking here though, Per 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 is going to be our next perspective. Already has four scrap, which is usually pretty big, but I don't really see too many scrap items being generated here. Yeah, so this is more of a lost streak scrap. Um, the win streak scrap needs a Ezreal 2 and a um, Ziggs 2. You see he's one off of both. But at least yeah, he but... has the Yordles in, which is kind I mean, of... You say you say lost streak, but look kind of what's <laughs> going on right here. Like, Ziggs is doing some pretty phenomenal stuff. The static shiv really comes in clutch, trying to make sure that Ziggs does as much damage as possible with the bombs. Yeah. And moving in the Yordles for Econ having any number of wins sort of under your belt when going this, I think that's pretty solid. It's definitely more than you can hope for. Kind of high rolls there into what I'm assuming is full loss tactical god. We saw that he's actually really great at maintaining HP while getting a five loss. So yeah. we'll have to see what's going on there. But I'm insanely happy to be 82 HP, 40 gold at Krugs. No. I as well, and like we'll have to see just where all this does decide to lead per per per. I think the next couple of decisions are going to be purely based on these items. So we're going with uh, three purs now, since he made it past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, one, they, right? they did pretty good. It's three purs. Like they'll they'll make it up a little bit more soon. Right now, yeah, just the rod, which that's exciting, but really you can't really slam that anywhere right now. But hey, you're running scrap. Yeah. For sure. The four scrap is, is awesome, right? You get up to three items here. Gets the S2. Can actually play yeah, a full mm -hmm. scrap board. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me too. I, I think it's a little bit risky removing that trundle just because Vex doesn't stabilize as hard as she used to on previous patches. But hey, we got something else we got to talk about here. <laughs> Tactical God, you said they're really good at maintaining health, but when you're running Mercs, I feel like so much goes out the window. Yeah, for sure. You're definitely more okay with losing health to maintain your loss streak. Sure, you don't really want to risk. Um, but we'll, we'll see here. We're not sure exactly when they, they were able to play the Mercs, but yeah. that frontline Bramble Vest, Last Whisper, a Trundle is actually going to be able to kill a few units. Yeah, and this is always the thing about playing something like Mercenaries. You want to lose, but you want to make sure you're not losing by too much. And you also have to be mindful of what all these other board states are looking like. If you really think that you're going to be hitting a lot of players that are weaker, like say, for example, I felt like this fight was going to be a little bit closer with the GA only really being the thing that sort of 
really firmly put this in tactical goods corner in my brain, sort of playing through this beforehand. But all mm-hmm. in all, so far, I feel like tactical gods doing a decent job of preserving health, even in face of this loss streak. 64 health, don't oh, get me wrong, is scary. Loss. Yeah, yeah, five loss too. It, like it just flashed the the merc chest. It's a five loss, so looking very good. Sixty four health, like you mentioned. Mm-hmm. And again, I like the slamming of the items too. Like usually when you play mercs, you have players that are very paranoid about cashing out early. But I feel like yeah. when you're in a tournament like this, you don't need to go for the crazy YouTube highlight reel. Just trying to go for some crazy loss streak, get some early Galio two at three five or something like that. Like. You don't need yeah. to do anything like that. You go in, you get your free eco, you get out. Exactly. That being said, this should still be a really fun game to watch. Um, for those of you don't know, who don't know, Tactical God is actually Thray from EU West, actually a very, very strong player. Oh, they should sorry. be able to make use of that Merc cash out. Underdogs is also making a lot of use in this board too, and it's actually going to be the thing that lets them beat <laughs> Xerix. So that might Ooh. be a slightly earlier cash out than they were looking for, but heck, we mm-hmm. now get a few more augment choices. With I know which one I would go. I'm kind of curious which way you're leaning. Yeah, I'm good with both Ascension and also because of the synergy with Underdogs, as mm-hmm. well as Celestial here. Um, underdogs gives enough healing so i don't think he'll go towards celestial but ascension here is a great choice yeah yeah that's gonna allow them to when they do hit those late game fights like we saw before really be able to hone things and and at this stage they can even keep running mercenaries for that extra little bit of trickle of gold yeah and it does feel a little bit bad to cash out early but cashing out like that without spending any gold is also really really nice I mean, now heck, they're kind of just got... ahead of everyone in terms of economy. Mm-hmm. You also get an item component out of that too, which is more than some of these early mercenary cash outs can really boast. Obviously, you don't get any like crazy high rolls. Like we didn't see a Thieves Gloves pop out of there or like a Tome of Traits or something ridiculous like that. But Stings mm-hmm. still were pretty good. Chewie here is the next player that we should probably take a look at. Take a look at this Kogma reroll or the beginnings of one. And quite yep. a Cog to really speak of just yet, but a Graves 3 <laughs> is on the horizon. Yeah, and their augments are actually really good for this. They have the Mutant, Unstable Evolution, as well as Ascension, which are both amazing augments for this comp. Yeah, there's so much extra survivability and staying power those frontline protectors, particularly three-star protectors, have. So it does mean you are able to reliably get the Ascension bonus off, unless, you know, a Blitzcrank was to, you know, grab a Kog'Maw or something like that. But we don't mind ourselves with details like that as we enter the carousel. (laughs) Yeah, and these players, you know, they're all scouting. They only go reroll comps if they're if they know they're not uh, they're not contested. Sorry, and um, yeah, people that scout Chewy will also avoid the comp as well. So we should see quite a strong comp emerge. He's at eighty HP here, which is really good. Usually, um, these reroll comps struggle quite a bit through stage three and spike more in stage four, but he's able to maintain quite a bit of HP here. Yeah, really curious to watch how that kind of develops as time goes on. I was also very afraid of that just because as we sort of seen so far in the beginnings of this lobby, this is a much more late game focused meta. And so running reroll can often be that liability because if you just don't hit, everyone's going to be scaling up and up and up around you. So all in all, I feel like they're in a pretty good position to start. We are going to switch back over here to Jerry Wu, who has a pretty good Malzahar at their disposal. The GA and the Morellos. You were hyping up this Morello Mouse a little bit before we got on the cast. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely not BIS, but he is actually a really common Morello holder. And he does struggle single target, um, being a single target, he does struggle a bit to get through the bulkier units like this Elawi Bruiser, but the Morello really helps with the tick damage there. Yeah, we also see a pretty early Seraphine here, just to try to get things going. She's is being nerfed, or she was nerfed, I think a little bit damage-wise in this previous patch, but her yeah. healing is still quite good. Yeah, I, I think actually it's the oh, other yes, way around. Was, the damage uh, main thing. Reverse it, yes. Yeah. No worries. Um, yeah, and Jerry Wu, they actually went level 7 at 3.5 with 40 gold. So that's really the effect of the Yordles giving you such a huge economy there. Yeah, really curious to see how they're going to turn that economy into a stronger board even still. Like, don't get me wrong, there's still a lot of crazy stuff that they're able to do with the mouse. He has the GA, so you're going to be able to make sure the dot procs well into the fight. The same time, though, take a look at that front line. 
Blitz 1, Vex 1, a Poppy 2, which it's a Yordle. Do we really count that as a real 2-star? That's going to be pretty difficult for them to maintain these longer fights, especially when you have someone like Jarity already oh, itemized wow. into the Yone. Yeah, that is, depending on the lobby, could be a BIS Yone, and that's a Warwick too. Quinn 2 with a Morello, very strong board. Yeah, and I mean, challengers are always just this sort of quick cleanup composition. They're usually able to turn these fights around very fast unless there's some kind of CC to disrupt them. And with little to Jerry Wu's board right now, they're just going to have to be taxed a little bit as they start trying to think of where they want to take this after the Wolves. Mm -hmm, exactly. We see here kind of the point differential or HP differential from first to last place is not too huge. We were noticing some of the other games, um, someone might be doing a 10 win streak into first, into the Wolves. Here it's looking a little more even. Yeah, especially the top four, only six HP separating them. So going to be really curious to see how this goes. Really is anyone's game. It's just going to come down to who's going to play this mid game the strongest. Exactly. And the item components here, not too bad. Um, yep, slams. When you get a bow in an Arcanist comp or an Enchanter comp, usually becomes like a Z-Rot or a Static Shiv, maybe a Giant yep. Slayer, right? Immediately slams yep. it. Pretty much. And I mean, it's good. You have to remember that when you are running Arcanist, any bow is a source of mana generation because attacking faster means that you generate mana faster. So all in all, it's a good slam here. I also especially like the Static Shiv just because of the MR reduction. I feel like that works very nicely. Curious to see mm. just how things go to. And here we have the Kogma comp without the Cog still. Chewy is now at mm. level 6. They are starting to slow roll for it, but they still have plenty of free stars that can still put in yep. the work. Yep. At 4-1, with an itemized Kassadin like that, you really don't need a Kogma. This, um, yeah. this board is spiking a little earlier than expected, which is very good for Chewy. Yeah, we'll have to see if they're able to hit the Cog with the same level of ease that they have these other one-cost units, but... That's going to be a story for a little bit later into this game. Mm -hmm. And I also don't think that Kogma 3 is a necessity in this comp. Obviously, mm -hmm. if you have 6 or 7 by, by stage 4, uh, you go for it. But he might stick with the Ooh. Cog 2 here. Sorry, just have to talk about this. We have the quick level to <laughs> oh 8. My. Finds the quick Yumi as well. That's going to be a pretty huge buff. One you thing I will say that. is that I think it might be greedy to stay in Dortles this late into the game. We have this low health, but when you're someone like Purr, who is still streaking very nicely, five games here, 74 health, you can greed a little bit more to get this Yordle Econ going. For sure. And one of the Yordles is a Heimerdinger two star, which I would keep in regardless. Definitely. The Morello is really huge here in taking down these uh, three costs or three star front line. Um, yeah, I Morello really love here, it's a loss for sure. Yeah, this is basically everything you want to see in an Echo. Morello and the, the Frozen Heart are both fantastic at just sort of shutting down so many different kinds of compositions. The only yeah. thing that I'll say that's a slight point of concern is that so far, the only main itemization I see is this more utility focus where usually when you play TFT, you want to try to be building into your primary carry first, just so that way you're not sort of left trying to figure out, well, geez, I need to build this, this, and this, but I need to build these side grades because I can't quite find that. So it becomes pretty difficult to try to build your carry last. Yeah, totally. And especially when streaking so hard, they'll be, they won't have any carousel priority here. I guess with the... They have Cloak. They could make an Ice Cream Cone here. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so that's a Chalice and maybe a Jewel Gauntlet as well. Yeah, so still lots of different doesn't seem completely options. doomed. But yeah, I totally understand what you're saying here. The items are looking a little scary. Yeah, and Scrap does also make it a little bit better too, just because you are able to sort of shift things around. I don't really think this is going to be too deep of a Scrap board here for Per, But it is still mm. one of those things to be a little bit mindful of because... Right now, like you said, I see a Chalice. I see a Jeweled Gauntlet that would require you to sell an Echo, so that's a little bit risky. Like, yeah. There's a few different ways this can go. I think it's just going to come down to what they are able to pick up from this carousel, which just because you're last, you're going to be stuck with one of these more defensive options, as well as the Raptors. Mm -hmm. He's basically waiting for his last Augment and Raptors before solidifying his choice. And by then, 
you know, the people that have kind of lower HP might have rolled and taken all of the units that you need. Still, though, they're in a very strong position here. They are level 8, 50 gold, win streaking, top of the leaderboard. I feel like that's a pretty good spot to be. They looks like they are also going to be trying to go towards 9, if I had to make a guess. Just try to get a little bit more access to those 5 cost units that, as you can sort of see on the bottom of your screen, a little bit rarer here at level 8 now. Mm -hmm. It's... It's definitely a good play to go 9. You can grab the units if you don't have the items. And uh, playing against the challenger board here with a Jace, an early Jace as well. Yeah, Frozen Heart is usually very good at countering challengers, but the problem is that they were so spread out and Echo so to the side, he wasn't really able to slow everything down as much as I think that Purr would have liked. So it mm -hmm. seems like it is going to be the end of the streak. Maybe one or two more units go down, but... This might be a signal to Purr to start trying to rearrange things. And heck, this Augment might do the same. Right. And that Fiora there, I really, really like. The IEJG with the Hodge. It's, mm. um, I would say BIS Fiora. If they, if, I, think, uh, I believe that was Lolly. If they hit a Fiora too, I think their board will be yeah. really, really strong. I think, I believe it was Frobe who made this video, but I'm pretty sure that's like, best in slot if you don't have to worry about resistance heavy compositions just generally so that does mm. to me ring true as one of the more powerful things that we could really be seeing quick scouting there did see a victor on a socialite hex we'll have to get back to that in a little bit but lots of scary things are starting to come online as players are hitting the beginning of the late game yeah we are seeing a couple chemtech ergots that was a very very popular comp run in the first few games this uh this morning in round one so We'll yeah. definitely be seeing those in each lobby, I would say. It's important to remember, too, you are trying to look for that meat shot to advance. You don't necessarily need to go first. You can just sort of say, I'll just go for the top four things will work out for me as time goes on. You can make the crazier plays when you need to, but for now, earn some easy points. You don't have to reach too high. Urgot's a pretty good poster child for that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And, that, and has been for quite a duration of this set. Yeah, how do, you, how do you think I climbed so high? Or got all the way. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Tactical God's perspective here has the early Kaisa and uh, the Fiora too here with also very good items. And that's one of the great things about Fiora is um, she's just so effective at holding a lot of different types of items. Yeah, really, no matter what you're doing, I feel like a Fiora swap is something that is at least a possibility. Like, even if you were running something a little bit more in the Arcanist realm of things, she can hold a decent amount of AP. I've seen people talk about Shoujin on Fiora, just to try to get her to have proc even more Blade Waltzes per minute. So, mm. all in all, that's pretty scary to me. Curious to see just how this board shakes out the last little bit here. We do still yeah. have that Challenger Emblem and a lot of interesting options item-wise on the bench, and let's just see how these last choices augment. Yeah, and they just sold the MF2 here. I really like how they were running MF, though, because um, she provides that heal reduction. Mm, and yes. uh, Morello wasn't there at the moment, so it was just a random splash. Most people wouldn't play that because there's no sniper, but um, I, re I really like that play. Yeah, as as you kind of say, like people kind of look at the left side of your screen and go, yeah, you want to make all these uh, synergy numbers like get bigger. You want to see bronze turn to silver, turn to gold to prismatic. But you also have to remember, as you're saying, these units perform functions outside of those synergies. And it's part of the reason why, say, you have Brahm, say, shifted in here as well. Even though he isn't really providing a ton of bodyguard presence with his own armor, that's a ton of CC that he's using to get everyone off of Fiora's back. Right, exactly. And having the Blitz in there kind of helps to group uh, units up, which is, I guess, like a hidden synergy, as Sox would say, for mm. MF. But yeah, now they've completed beautiful. Fiora's items and put a Morellonomicon plus GS on the Kai'Sa. Yeah, it's quite it's, the strong board. It's kind of hard for Misfortune to compete with a Kai'Sa with Morello in terms of anti-heal. I think it's kind of hard for anything to compete in terms of anti-heal with a Kai'Sa with Morello. It's yep. kind of ridiculous. And while we are a far cry away from the nightmarish December that it seems like we were experiencing where it was... Kaisa, 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 Morello, 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 Socialite, 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 every single game. But oh, don't remind we me. are still, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sure I <laughs> brought up some bad memories for a lot of people and a lot of lost LP, but at the same time, it's still quite effective now. Yeah, definitely. 
still a premier Morello holder. And um, ah, I just want to point out that we're at 5-2 here with all eight players still in the lobby. Much closer some than looking, some of the other games. Yeah, some looking healthier than others, mind you, though. Pita is looking very low. Xerix a little more than twice the health. So this could be a little bit difficult. This is that Fiora we were talking about, though, in terms of max damage possibilities. And this yep. is the other thing I was saying with, hey, you want to make sure she can actually act. She gets CC knocked up, shifted around, and stunned all over the spike. Ooh. And that's why Tactical God wins it out. A Tactical God, indeed. True to his name. That fight could have gone either way. It really depended on the positioning of the Braum there, as you mentioned, the CC on the Fiora. Yeah, there was just so many different things. The Braum um, oh. ulti into the immediate Yumi as well. Yumi is actually Pita. something I want to make sure we talk about. Too. No, sorry, you see something. Yeah, Pita was actually knocked out that last round. Oh, first wow. to go, First to go here. That is going to be rough. That just means they are going to be walking out of here at one point, but it's still pretty early on. They can make it up for that with some pretty risky plays, taking them into the top three in future games. But for now, let's keep looking here to Jerry Wu, who has maintained this Arcanist board here with Socialite to ramp up the power. Yeah, three Socialite here. I really I really like that. And um, we have the Chalice boosting the Malzahar and an Archangel Seraphine. Yeah, really quickly, I feel weird saying Arcanist because there actually isn't an Arcanist synergy in. It's just an AP comp, so I'm sorry. I got very mm. excited because we've been so starved. It's been so long, but Jerry Wu oh. won't be able to experience that much more. It looks like Lolly's just moving around, smacking everyone with attacks. Yeah. That um, that Fiora, if she's not dealt with properly, if she's not CC'd, Zephyr'd, Shrouded, then she's free to go to town. Yep. Now to the carousel, back to Purr. Still at the top of this leader, but for no longer streaking. That's been taken up by Tactical God. Mm -hmm. Just the sheer amount of HP that they were able to preserve has kept them up here. But we've been seeing some strong boards, so we'll have to see how they do here. Yeah, they have picked up the Chalice at this stage. So, I mean, that is going to be quite effective in terms of, you know, spreading out a decent amount of AP. Still, though, I think they are feeling the burn from the fact that they were building the utility first, and now they're just sort of stuck trying to fit whatever's left. Ham Kench is really good here on a six scrap board. Every item that he's able to farm just provides so much value for the team. And Indeed oh, it will. your favorite unit, a pair of your favorite units. <laughs> yeah, well, I was, I was just talking about this. Like, Yumi is one of the most common units I think I see in link game TFT. Like... Many five costs, I think the ideal state for five costs, you can really shift her into any board you want and she's going to excel. Mm -hmm. The and, and she's a scholar too, right? Which is mm. just great for any board. There's just so much utility in one unit. Like, like we were talking about before, if you see a unit, you buy Yumi, you play Yumi. Yeah, but Lolly's continuing to tax everyone they see. Xerix also is the next player to go down, so... Players are certainly starting to drop before they can even see the dragon. Mm -hmm. Xerix was actually I, the most dominant player in round one earlier today. Mm -hmm. They'll be starting off with a sixth at the moment. Yeah, that is going to be pretty impressive to see. As you were touched on, they were the most dominant of, I think, any lobby that we saw. They finished round one with 21 points, which is very high with only likes of Jerry Wu as well as, I believe, the flea is... Uh, I believe that's Loli. Don't correct me if I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, that's Tactical God, the flea. Oh, that's Tactical God, the flea. Excuse me. Yeah. Sorry. Some of the player names shifting around between challenger mode to here to all that kind of stuff. Trips me up every now and then. But even then, no like, Xerix going down is very huge in terms of what people were thinking that the strength of this lobby was going to be. Loli is looking to take down another. This is just oh, wow. absolutely bloodthirsty coming in. Yeah, that's three in a row. They'll be streaking very shortly. Yeah, Tactical God oh. is still streaking. Purr also goes low, but hey, they've done what they've set up to do every single game so far this tournament. Just get the top yep. four to continue themselves. So it is going to be pretty rough. They are against... Stiff competition between Loli and Tactical God and Chewie still holding on despite going for a reroll comp when everything else seemed to be shifting away from that meta-wise, but they are in a pretty crazy position. 
Per, I don't think is too excited to look at this dragon. Right. <laughs> I, I would agree. But they looking at their bench, I do see they're level nine. They have Jace pair, Yumi pair, Jinx pair. So maybe regardless of item, like we were talking about, about before, you can just go level nine, get the units, and try to make the best of it. Well, you still got to get the units right now. Jinx looks like she will okay. be the first. One or two more rolls. It looks like he might only be able to two-star one, one of these if given the Ooh. chance. But no. It's another pair. Here, Jinx I is think... still nice. Mm -hmm. I think you have I... to pick up the time Kench here. You have to, no matter what. No, oh, actually oh. does decide to sell. <laughs> the chase. Yeah, I do also like the Jewel Gauntlet being quickly thrown onto the Jinx too. It's for scrap value mm -hmm. to give her a little bit more crit chance. It's not going to be huge, but it's still going to yeah. be useful unless she is enforced. enforced. It is unfortunate. I think her sister told on her, and as a result, she can't move anymore. But hopefully the JG here doing some work. Yeah, not to mention the Ascension as well. It looks like that's going to be enough Ooh, power to sort of keep on. it going. Yeah. You love that. You hate to see him lose here with the Jace in the shop. So Yeah. Unfortunately for Purr, though, Lolly was not eliminated. They are still clinging on here. They do have an advantage going into this next round by seven health, just in case they both get eliminated. But of course, mm -hmm. that doesn't matter if they lose and Lolly wins, unless Chewie takes a particularly bad loss. Right. So Lolly, yeah, Lolly lost to Tactical God in the last one that GS Last Whisper Hodge Fiora still proving mm -hmm. to be very strong in stage six. Yeah, and this is what we were talking about. Holly oh. is still pretty strong, but a good, good Zephyr actually takes the Fiora out of the field early on. Mm -hmm. The best case is if Tam Kench could get the oh, could not get the spell off on Fiora here, but yeah, Jace has plenty of time to ramp. Much. Yeah, There's and now it's just shielding. Looking at Chewie, who also oh. goes down. What did I tell you? Purr is certainly delivering everything I was hoping for going into the start here. Granted, it looks like it is still Tactical God's game to lose. Frey is performing mm -hmm. absolutely phenomenally. But you still have to be looking at everyone in this top four feeling pretty good. For sure. I mean, Purr, we called it out. He, We thought he would bleed out with those items but you know in a stroke of genius just decided to go six scrap if i don't have items i'll just slam components yeah and slam Kench components power level to nine make sure you get those units it just ended up working out at the last moment we did see a couple of little shifts around at the last second to try to avoid zephyrs it looks like it will work as it is going to be the whiff onto the kaisa right definitely needed to hit that kaisa here we'll see if the scrap shielding is enough for this fight yeah, I don't know. Jinx kind of died pretty darn quickly here. But I don't know if she's actually in the she's back, in the line. back I mean, line. I'm yeah. I'm used to seeing her oh. just sort of in the front, just sort of being <laughs> completely destroyed. But she managed to work it out just fine there. And it looks like it's going to be Frey taking the win. A really great showing from Purr here. Purr, 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 I might say. Purr, 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 yeah. So, that, you know, <laughs> they did a good job. I think they earned at least one. We'll have to see if they're going to be able to continue that on. But... Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. Well and truly, I feel like that was a pretty good game for everyone involved. It was lasted very late. Even the players that were eliminated, they hung on for a long period of time. Obviously, Definitely. that's a bit of a mental challenge, too, because you kind of look and go, geez, I played so much TFT. I lasted so long. I still only have one point to show for it. But right. these games are a marathon. You don't have to win everything up front. And so as a result, we just see some measured play go through. Maybe we see a few risks here and there, just try to secure things a little bit more safely. We could still yeah. see some magic happen. Yeah, exactly. It's a big mental game as well as a tactical game here. And um, yeah. yeah, I I was a little bit sad to see Jerry Wu go Bob Four there. Um, yeah. Did play they, they on time. Arcanus comp, which was nice. Yeah. But yeah. Well, they played AP. It's they played time. AP. Remember, they only had one Arcanist, but plenty of other little different AP supporting items, such as the Chalice, in order to buff it up to those yeah. big AP power levels that we expect Malzahar to have. So mm -hmm. still, once again, kind of as expected, AD sort of gets a lot of excitement while AP is sort of still shifted under the rug a little bit sort of going through here. But 
plenty great. of time still. We're going to be taking a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to be here with game two. Yep. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hello there, and we're back. And these players are much quicker than we anticipated already past the carousel into 1 2. I'm still Pro Troy. That's still FPO. You got more TFT. Yeah, just jumping straight into it. Um, I, I did want to talk a little bit about last game for uh, Lobby 1 that we didn't get to see. Um, Ardem actually went first with a Lux 3. Oh, <laughs> that is exactly what we were telling people to watch out for. When everyone underestimates the AP, that's when you are going to be able to do crazy things like that, like re-roll for that forecast that no one thinks to roll for. So that's exciting. I One thing I do want to point out here is that I want to see some redemption here for Xerix. They came into this lobby with 21 points, best showing of anyone in the qualifying rounds, and they finished six. I feel like there is time still. They want to make a good showing this round. But here, time to talk about the augments. Ray takes weak spot. Weak spot is always a great unit to take. <laughs> Pings the Shaco here and has a Nico on the bench. Yeah, Nico, Nico, Ni nee will be able to get things going a little bit faster. I kind of like just trying to ensure you get like an early three star two cost, like find another random Shaco, more so than greeting it super late when you get this early Nikos, just because mm -hmm. otherwise you are skipping out on a benefit that everyone else, assuming they got like an item or gold, has already hit before you. So the longer you let this wait, the rougher it's going to be with being outscaled. Right, I completely agree with that. Some people will never use this on a three cost, but if um if they're able to hit a Shaco pair, I would not mind with the glove as well. And we'll see a cloak. Not too bad. Yeah, still a good chunk of possibilities open here. I feel like QS is starting to see a little bit more play again just after I think like a pretty big period of people ignoring it simply because it was no longer this anti Zephyr, anti everything item. But mm -hmm. now that it's had a little bit more time, people are starting to appreciate how damaging and scary CC can be. I feel like we could see more opportunities, but not necessarily a slam. Yeah, for sure. There's, um, It's not necessarily BIS for many units, but you're never unhappy to slam it as a third mm -hmm. item. One thing I'll say that I'm not a big fan of is that we have the graves in the front line. Usually when you're running assassins, you want to try putting... Your any non-assassins as far back as possible just to make sure that everyone else is going to be walking up. Chewy, though, mm -hmm. moved everything into the front two rows to make use of the nice edge. That was pretty devastating. No other really way of saying it other than that. So yeah. it doesn't really matter. Great play by Chewy. They do have the cast two, early cast two, which will save them a lot of HP, even though they're running Yordles. Yeah, it's one of those great things with rules when you get those scenarios where you can have your cake and eat it too, and you're able to get all that extra econ, but also not have to worry too much about the Lost Streak. It's why I think one of my favorite openings in this game right now is the Yorl Innovator. If you get like a random Heimerdinger off one of your orbs in the first few PvE stages, mm. it means that yeah. you're able to econ up without losing as much health. Here though, Tactical God, after taking the one loss, has decided it's not worth it to try to go for any kind of waffling. Let's confirm the Lost Streak here and just get some gold out of it. Right, and we, we've seen Tactical God as one of those players that are able to play a Lost Streak pretty well. Yeah, and that's a big point too, because like how we talked about how a lot of these players are biased towards these more AD compositions, I feel like a lot of them are also biased towards winning, which, you know, makes sense. You need to win rounds to win this game, but you don't really see too many players looking for these Lost Streak styles. So Tactical God embracing that and knowing how to play around that is a pretty big buff to their just tactics, I suppose. As is, you know, just yeah. getting a random Vex 2. The, the odds were reduced, but, you know, I, I can't see that. Love to hatch that 5% Vex. Can't complain about that at all. Certainly is going to be a nice bit of high roll. No item slams just yet. One thing that I'll say is that, remember, Vex was also nerfed very slightly on this patch. That means that she's not going to be as big of a stabilization as she used to be. So, as a result of that, Tax of God is still probably going to keep losing, just not as hard. Ooh, see a similarly weak board here. We'll have to see. The I really like the Caitlyn play when you're mm -hmm. lost streaking. Um, it really helps you make sure you kill one or two units. 
Yeah, I think I see why the sport is similarly weak. I also see three item components on the bench and a Nico on the bench. Both of these <laughs> players getting that same item start, well, at least in terms of getting the Nikos, I suppose. Mm-hmm. I really want to see that slammed sooner rather than later just to try to secure something early. But with Tactical God going for Yordles, playing for Lost Streak, maybe they're comfortable just reading it to try to maybe find an early four cost two star. Yeah. There was a Shaco with a Rod Pro. Would you ever pick up that Shaco Ooh. there? To me, that's pretty exciting. I don't quite know, though, because I feel like right now, itemization wise, I believe a glove was picked up off the carousel. We don't really have a ton uh, of direction. Oh, it was a. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, I mean off the initial carousel. Oh, yeah. So yeah, as sorry. a result of that, we don't really have a ton of direction from where, like, say, the following items in the drop bag that's left. It looks yeah. like, though, this is going to be more of a focus on towards the traditional Yordle carry build of Tristana, which, don't get me wrong, she's very strong at, but there are other ways to carry Yordles. I I totally agree, and I believe they will swap Tristana out the first chance they get. Yeah. Well, we'll have to keep watching here. Yeah. Here's to Proto, also lowly, as you can see in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. They've been going also pretty strong start too. Lots of Yordles in this comp, but they're also running four bodyguards, which, as we mm-hmm. said, nerfed just a tiny little bit, but is still quite strong at this early game. Yeah, and that Xerix or that, that um Ziggs actually is able to do so much damage here because the bodyguards just don't die. Yeah. I mean, hey, if you're Ziggs, you scrap yourself a fancy little hat, do all that extra magic damage, that, that's gonna be pretty good for you. For sure. Actually, a really strong one-cost carry if you're able to keep the enemies locked up with a bodyguard frontline like that. Yeah. Lots of two-stars also came in on the bottom left corner of your screen. That was the really quick glance over at the Trist 2 that Tactical God found. I think Peta found a Kogma 2, and Jerdy was able to pick up a slightly less contested unit in the form of the Zyra, but still powerful nevertheless. Mm-hmm. We see he's um, scouting Xerix quite a bit. Did position for him because they're both streaking. Uh, we'll see how he does against this Swain too. Yeah, this is always one of my favorite scenarios in TFT. Two Mr. and Miss 100s enter, only one leaves. Xerix, I think, even despite yeah. the Swain nerfs, is probably just in a better position just because this board is weighted against physical damage and Swain does absolutely none of that. So. Yeah. All in all, it looks like it's going to be Xerix walking out of here with the full win streak into Krugs. Well, you know, Proto's just going to be a little bit disappointed. They are going to have the consolation prize of the almost 40 gold, so that will be helpful, but it's right. just not going to be the same. Yeah. Playing Yordles, they, they are one econ interval ahead of Xerix, but, you know, the streak is huge there. That's three gold per round. Yeah, so even being the one pip ahead, it's still going to be Xerox making a little bit more gold. So just again, another reason why you should be trying to press these advantages as much as physically possible. Yeah, we didn't see it this round, but um, the first game we saw Xerox level to 5 at 2-3, right? This, mm-hmm. uh, their playstyle is very aggressive, and I'm a big fan of that. Yeah, and even then, like, I can't fault them for doing something... like. I think it was a smart move to not say go for six, which I feel like would have been just completely absurd, especially when there wasn't really anything on this bench that really would have been good to place in if you were to do something like that. If there was yeah. like something absolutely nuts, like if they just managed to hit a Braum or something, maybe you could make some kind of good argument for it, but just isn't going to be the right time as we swap over to Jared's board. It looks like that was the player that managed to pick up that AP Shaco, not really... The same way it was in League, you can't really put down too many of your boxes, but hey, there's a dream. Maybe at some point, Shaco will be not dropping aggro instead of frustrating people in another way. Mm-hmm. The IE on the Shaco, I like this quite a bit. They have the Zyra too, which is quite strong. And Pita is playing Mercs, actually, Mercenaries here. Yeah, and it looks like decent enough Mercenaries too. We did see Gangplank able to print out a little bit of gold. We always do like looking for that bank plank. But now it's going to be all down to the Syrah to get the win here. I think Pita's sweating a little bit because I don't think they want to cash out just yet. Mm, yeah, that's definitely a very early cash out here. 
but it looks like they've kind of been going back and forth. I did see that chest not open up too far. That's true, yeah. Which is alright, just generating a little bit of extra econ here and there. Yeah. Now with me right now, just looking at this board from Jarity, I see all the beginnings of going for something like the Akali, because we already have the IE, we have the components here for Anarch Spark, which is just for the same reasons it was strong on Katarina, is also strong on Akali these days as well. I think it might be a little bit crazy to think that late into the game right now, but for me, I think you want to try to go late like that. What are you saying here? Yeah, I totally agree with that point. Um, you're definitely thinking about your late game comps or your several outs for late game comps by this point. And having the IE on the Shaco, having four syndicates, definitely looking like an Akali angle. Yeah. Lolly, though, still looking to have a very strong board here in the now that Vex2 has mm -hmm. now really hit and really made things go here as Jerry takes a full six unit loss. Yeah, Lolly's thanking Morthog on this one. 3 1 natural Vex 2. Yeah, how it goes. And ooh, take ooh. a look at some of these. Okay. I'm actually quite happy to see all three of these. Yeah, I think one for all, I'm a little bit less so than the others just because even though there is a lot of room for Syndicus to excel a little bit longer right now, it's going to be a bit risky. I, I think it's fun if it's taken. Okay. Yeah, it is definitely a bigger commitment. Yeah, but so it, now we it get can the... pay off a lot in the future. Yeah, now we get the second form of Dark Star, I suppose, that has <laughs> wormed its way into the set. Good old Dark Star Shaco coming back. Oh, do, do not remind me. We're, we're talking about things like give us these crazy flashbacks to previous sets. <laughs> if I could, if I wanted to, I could talk about some great stuff from set one. I'm sure everyone's repressed, but I like <laughs> to think that I'm a very strong guy. I'm not going to talk about all the crazy item nullification or just setting people to 100 health because that'd be rude, and I don't want to put anyone through that. Here, though, <laughs> back in the now, Jarity is now going to go here against Xerix, still at the top of the leaderboards right here has also picked up Ascension as well as the Socialite Heart. That is a huge pickup. Yeah, for sure. I, I really like, he's still kind of running the Malzahar Swain combo here, but the um, TG Fiora here is doing additional work now, finally. It plays nicely into how Fiora works as well, because remember, like we were talking about earlier, Fiora can really excel with a bunch of different items, which even though you'd want to itemize her more properly, it means that she's a pretty good holder of TG if you're not planning on going too deep into Fiora. Yeah, for sure. Usually, you want to put TG on like a frontline unit as there are more defensive combos available, but Fiora would be the exception here. Like you mentioned, she's just so good at holding so many, so many items. And she can be a tank if she wants to be too. So like, obviously, she's not going to be the best tank and she'd prefer to have more damagey things at her disposal but hey she can still make it work i totally agree even as a tanky fiora that true damage can still do quite a bit of work yeah we'll just have to see just how some of these item picks have moved on this also could be a pretty interesting pickup here if we do see the gins ginsu's on the gin Nope, looks like the safer option is going to be the Last Whisper. Sorry, I got I got ramped up into talking about thinking about side grades and how all these different possibilities could work for Jin, and I did see the more obvious option staring me right in the face. <laughs> it does happen sometimes. The best players get dizzy. But the IE Last Whisper here is great. The only thing they'll be wanting is uh, an upgrade to Shaco 2 here. Yeah, but so far they are pretty far away from that. Need two more, and the best odds are a level away. So who knows? Lucky things can happen. But as it stands right now, it looks like it's mostly going to be the augments providing that extra damage to the Shaco as opposed to the level up. Mm -hmm. The Chewy's board here is actually quite, quite a good value, quite a budget board, which is still strong. I really like seeing that. Yeah. I mean, hey, that's always kind of what you're looking for here. It's a little bit like how you would play something like Monopoly, actually, where your goal isn't to have the most expensive board or the most cap board. You just want to have a board that's more, uh, has better utilization than anyone else in the lobby, just so that right. way you can keep trying to win streak and such like that. Obviously, if you're going capped, you're going capped. You're going to be doing absolutely fine, but you mm. really just want to get the win streak at a minimum and everything else is just a bonus. Right. That's what really separates the great players from 
you know, the top players. Definitely, definitely, definitely. We do see the Yone here on the back line here, which I'm not really too big of a fan on. I think this is one of those instances where people might get tied too close to the socialite hex, just because and, I feel like oh, Yone no. really needs to be in the front two lines for and a reason that looks a lot it. like this. Oh, no. <laughs> Yone just stuck in the back line there. Yeah. I really hate to see that. And this is right. actually that, the that is a bit of a bait into the socialite yeah. X. This is also the reason, and this is only tangentially related, why I always feel awkward going for something like the uh, target dummies when I'm going challengers, just because I feel like you want to front line so much or keep so much in those front two lines that you kind of get into this awkward rhythm of where do I even place these? Mm -hmm. I totally agree. Um, it does look like they're trying to get a Jin here and just temporarily flexing into the yoni comp yeah so we'll, we'll have to see if that's the like case. we've talked yeah like we've talked about like yone jin and urga are this really healthy triumvirate i would say of all these different ad item carriers and with an ie last whisper some of those are going to make better use of that than the others but all of them can make decent use out of it and ooh, that's a gold orb what do we get Ooh, speak of the devil okay and sold immediately Oh, couldn't pick up the Scion in time, actually. They were they were going for it there. Yeah, it would have been nice to sort of augment things up a little bit more, but as you kind of said, not going to be for this game. Braum 2, though, is going to be absolutely huge in getting all that CC working. And heck, they're even going to be Ooh, using okay. that Nico to get the Jin too. I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. No greed. I like that, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, That this is all great. I still... I want to see the Fiora move up a little bit too, but I'm not as worried about that, let's say. Ooh, look at this. Mm -hmm. Journey was able to get the two-star of the Shaco, and on top of that too, was able to pop off the rod. So that's pretty mm -hmm. good. <laughs> Something they've been looking forward to doing since 2-5. Yes, indeed. Unfortunately, though, even though that's probably the best odds they can get there, Journey wasn't quite able to get things going. Still here at the bottom of the leaderboards here at 28 HP before we get to the carousel round. That's pretty low, I have to say. I think this is mm -hmm. a number that you got to feel concerned of whether or not you're ever going to see your bird augment. Yeah, this is, it's going to be rough. You might have to stay level seven, roll it all down. Um, just unfortunate they had to rotate into Tactical God here, who has Braum 2, Yone 2 at 4-1. Yeah. Regardless and of items, that's just too strong. Yeah, and just hit too. Like, we saw them roll down a little bit. We saw them slam items. We saw them use their Nikos. That's pretty much everything Tactical God could have done, absent of just finding a random bit of armor to build a GA on their Yone, just between the couch cushions or something like that. They did absolutely everything they could to make this board stronger. And Jerry just unfortunately was the guy that was going to go against it. Yeah, 100%. We're seeing this no greed just going for it. Tactical God is paying off. Um, they're on a five win streak here. Several, maybe some lower ranked players might have greeted for the Jin. You know, I have a Nico, mm -hmm. I just need to find one Jin. But um, they they put these suboptimal items on Yone, and um, they're killing it right now. Yeah, and suboptimal, but still good, like I was saying before. Like, obviously, mm -hmm. when you're playing Yone, you'd rather have something like a Runins. You'd rather have, like, QS to prevent yourself from getting CC'd. But this is now a very damage heavy yone and the spurred item you're looking at a lot of options that should be a little bit less contested on this last carousel like no one is going to be looking for an armor at the state well i don't want to oh. say that because we're going to see armor taken round one that was a quick little cash out really quick for pita i believe it was so it looks like they continue to run burks and just had a small little cash out there yeah exciting yeah. to see hopefully they'll be able to keep that going Third item, something they have a sword on the bench, GS would be quite strong. Indeed. And, uh, on top of that, too, here. like I said, armor would be pretty good just to try to get another item for the Yone that's a little bit more core on him on top of mm -hmm. this more raw damage focus build. Mm -hmm. The damage Yone is uh, really difficult to play because you have to kind of sweat your positioning every single round. But mm -hmm. if you are able to position well, it's, I think, the strongest way to play Yone. Ooh. Yeah, especially considering... Oh, yeah, that was pretty rough, but hey, still okay. Especially considering how, remember, Yone's uh, spirit just gives him healing based on the amount of damage it deals, and that includes that kind of crit damage. 
And so as a result of that, even though you don't have any kind of lifesteal on your itemization, you have it innately when the spirit comes out, which is the important caveat that I think everyone needs to remember in there where Yone can still get CC, can still get bursted. Yeah. Just a quick snapshot at the standings here. We do see Xerix and Jerry uh, in the top top four here. And it looks like Pita, Purper, and Jerry are a little bit further down in the 30s and 20s. Yeah, looks like that's exactly what they needed after game one. Just had to shake things off, reassess where things were going. Here's the armor that I was talking about. That's a pretty easy mm. slam onto the Yone. And here's a fast eight as well to sneak in Enforcer. Yeah, I really like that play. Uh, GA just kind of is, is much for, more forgiving in terms of positioning. Does a lot mm -hmm. better into many different comps. And also remember everyone's favorite interaction where if you have Yone die while his spirit is out, he's going to keep attacking despite Yone being in the Shadow Realm, I suppose. So all in all, yeah. things are still going to be pretty okay as we move back over to Jaredy, who is still carrying the Shaco, but unfortunately only mm. one Shaco 2 to his name. 10 gold as well. It looks like they they were kind of forced to roll down here at 28 HP. It didn't quite hit. Yeah, that said though, they are looking... Fairly strong right now for Assassin, i.e. Shaco is doing tons of damage. You also have the last, uh, sorry, not Last Whisper, Rudin's Hurricane in order to make sure that if he gets stuck on a certain target, he's going to be able to keep moving around the damage. Augment wise I like the thing where they're thinking with that smoke bomb just to give a little bit more defensive utility to the Shaco. Yeah, just a little more there. It definitely helps him out quite a bit. I love the item combo on Shaco. It's a decently strong board for a stage four. Indeed it is. Now, obviously, like we can't see any like big hopes and dreams like we were talking about before of like, ooh, let's look for a Kali and all this kind of stuff. But at the same time, they should be able to keep this board in a relatively stable state so they're not gonna be finishing hopefully as they are right now in seventh. Mm -hmm. They should be looking for a little bit more middle of the pack. For sure. They definitely made the best with what they were given. Hopefully they can kind of pull through with uh, some good items at Raptors. I don't know if you saw that. He quickly flashed over Xerix, and um, oh. Xerix had a Death's Defiance Fiora too. Oh, well, we'll see it. We'll see it right here. Yeah, it's live and in person at this stage here, and this just kind of is a further testament to what Fiora can carry. Like this is a pretty scary option of an Orn item for her because. Even if she does get focused down, that's going to be converting so much of that damage into damage over time, so she can just shrug it off. Yeah, just become untargetable and heal it back up. We do see another interaction that's important to call out, though. Remember, whenever Shaco all TC does drop aggro, so that meant that Fiora went somewhere else instead of continuing to attack the Shaco, so I believe one more unit was killed in that last fight, so all in all, that's okay. But it shows how even though Jaredy has rolled down a ton, there is still more work to do as, oh, looking over in the bottom right, Purr Purr is looking pretty low right now at 6 HP. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it looks like they're running uh, the Innovator comp, but it's a Seraphine 1 and a Heimer with no items here. Yeah, you do have the Chalice to buff up a little bit more AP coming through here, but... I kind of agree. Right now, there isn't a huge damage carry, so it is going to come down to these last couple of items. Right. They are holding on to Jin. Uh, play some Jin evaders here, but we did see a Jin two in the lobby. See that it is a little bit contested. Oh. Never mind. Just hit. Yeah, just like like I like to say, team fight tactics is a voice activated game. You speak <laughs> into the microphone. You get whatever you want sometimes that's separated, of course, by like a game or something like that. So it just it doesn't always work out. Here, mm -hmm. though, this is a really good find for the Jin. but oh, what do you... We okay. said this was contested. Why? What's going on here? We the just the one downside, though... Don't worry, that, that one was just one of the Jins that we saw last time. That one's not too special. <laughs> um, but here, I think the thing to be concerned about is that even though you're running this Jin 2, you don't have a ton of extra bonuses on it like you are able to slam this gs which i think is the best option you could but you're yeah. also forced to put on this locket which while very strong right now and it's certainly to be applauded because it's still a good unit in a good item in the meta not mm -hmm. what you want to have on your two-star gym right and a little bit unlucky rotating into xerix's uh crazy fiora here yeah xerix very certainly making up for lost time keeping things going in this lobby 
It's unfortunate for Purr. They went second into an eighth. Um, they can definitely still pull it off in the in the last game, though. Yeah. Proto, meanwhile, showing kind of what we more expect to see in a standard gen comp with, as we were seeing before, the Death Blade, the QS, as well as the Last Whisper, which is really good at getting through those bodyguards that Jin always seems to struggle with. What I've got to yeah. talk to you about, though, is that we did see the cell of the Scion, which Scion mm -hmm. and Brom seem to be like this main tag team duo that we see in a lot of compositions, particularly the Jin. Do you agree yeah. with the cell here? Do you think the two slots were too expensive for Lolly to hold on to? Mm. That's a good point. I usually don't agree with the cell there, but at 22 HP in a tournament, I think I do agree with it. The Braum 2 is just is just so strong, and he, he needed the gold here. Yeah. Jaredy, meanwhile, has dipped down to negative 6 HP, so that's going to be the end of their run this game. they still got one more to keep things going. Xerix, meanwhile, still showing why they're at the top okay. of this pack right now. This Fiora is doing work, and I am... So happy that after so many patches of fewer sort of being this like redheaded uh, step child or whatever, I don't quite recall the exact uh, metaphor, but you know, we're, we're, we're working through it. Like after being sort of neglected through a lot of this meta, I like to see that she's back. Mm -hmm. For sure. It's just like such a good unit to show some skill expression. I feel, I mean, mm -hmm is being able to slam the correct items on her. because Just because there's so many different types of item combinations, just slamming whatever is strongest on her. So big yeah. skill expression moments. Look feel. here now to the Ooh. bottom of your screen with that Victor powered up with two chalices and a very fancy hat. That is going to do tons of damage, but it's still a Victor one, so it's not going to be enough. Mm -hmm. Jerry is... I, I like where Jerry's head is at, like we were talking about before playing these AP comps when they're neglected, but unfortunately, they're just not hitting them. Yeah, for sure. And getting matched up against a binary airdrop, Chemtech Ergot comp is just very, very difficult for Victor to handle. Yeah, especially when that Ergot also gets an IE when it fights you too. Like, that's just going to be pretty rough. I think this mm -hmm. scare cell, though, it's going to be grab the Victor every single time. Like, just to try to prioritize. No, actually, moves right oh. around for Arcanists. Right, okay trying to get that four arcanus in there yeah actually i didn't notice the fact that uh, there was still only running three here so no nope, that that is a valid play good good to, good on you jerry Wu. You, you seem to know more about tft than me which fair it's not too bad i wouldn't have minded the victor there as well but i guess just a guaranteed upgrade worth a little more in his mind than the chance for a victor too yeah, as we talked about too, remember, there is 1% less of a chance here at level 8. That does mean you are less likely to find the Victor 2 just naturally in the shop. So you're right, burn the hand 2 in the bush. makes. I'm going through all the metaphors I got today, by the way. So don't worry, I'm going to get a full list. So game free is nothing but metaphors. But regardless of all of that, seems like Jerry is as strong as they can be going into potentially their last fight. Mm -hmm. Now, I have been noticing that the one percent change actually does make quite a quite a difference. We're still seeing the five costs pop up at level eight, but seeing far fewer two star or two star five yeah. costs popping up. Yeah, that really has been the main name of the game, I suppose. Where yeah, they're going to be a lot. You're still going to see them, of course, because it is still level eight. It's fun to hit those crazy power moments. But yeah, you're not going to see these crazy moments where all of a sudden you just have a bunch. Wow, oh. Fiora just gets a really quick delete there. She doesn't have any more resistance to CC, though. But it's just oh, going to be a 1v9. Oh, she's able to 1v9. <laughs> oh. oh, no. On top of that, too, Jerry Wu goes down in seventh place as Lolly manages to scrape on with a fifth at negative two. So that is going to be quite rough all things told and here we have again another pretty interesting lobby xerix has found redemption in here pita and chewy are here once again and tactile god certainly looks at home right and we're seeing again that ad is king here i believe the top four comps are all yone or ergot um mm. i think there was the one Jin comp yeah all definitely looking Pretty strong here. Here's that binary airdrop Urgot that we were talking about before from Chewy. Both of these players are currently win streak. One of them isn't going to be after this fight. Mm -hmm. 
Unfortunately, it looks like we might be in a bit of a PowerPoint presentation, but I can give a quick <laughs> summary, I suppose, where it looks like everyone is dead. My God, my God, Ch Chewy wins. <laughs> Is that, is that, I, think that, I think that's some surfing up. I think that was every presentation I made in college, which Accurate is terrifying summary. now that I think of the context. But regardless of any of that, PETA has also gone down here, doesn't get to see what odds on their dragon. And IE is usually a welcome gift. Here, you have a lot of itemization already done, but you can throw that on your Jace with little worries. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's uh feels bad for PETA here. They were playing Mercs, but mm. not, not really able to streak and uh, use it properly. Had a couple cash outs, and at least it's yeah. a top four, but could have gone a lot better. Yeah, certainly. And I mean, like I said, Mercs is something that is very risky to play in tournament, unless it's the last game of the tournament. So I'm hoping we see a bit of a spike in Merc interest as time goes on, but we'll see how that goes. But mm -hmm. yeah, it can be very risky, especially when it doesn't pay off. But Heck, considering oh. how bad I've seen Merc boards go, I think a top four is fine. But here we have a bunch of big jumps at this stage here, Yumi 2 being cheap among them. Yeah, Yumi 2 is actually such a huge upgrade here. And um, these three players, very, very healthy, even in stage six. Yeah, going to be curious to see how late this game goes. And really just to highlight that, Yumi, I know a lot of people think that going from one to two star, Yumi can be a bit of a dead unit because you're still getting that same really stun off. But you have to remember, Yumi is against more health, which means she's going to be granting a higher shield to the unit she latches onto. So that could be a pretty big difference maker as we go through into these fights. The raid boss of the Fiora is down. She has one last hurrah. But it's going to be close. Nice. Isn't able to cut it out. And we were, we were talking about this, uh, or I was saying suboptimal items on the Yone, but against Fiora, against a single target like that, it was actually able to do so much work, and it might be BIS for this lobby. I think so too, because it's also important to remember that the other items you have put on Yone, like say, for example, uh, Runins, that's to just sort of make sure he can attack as many people as physically possible. And mm. you do that in case you get stuck on a tankier unit, but IE Last Whisper is going to kind of have the same function there. Like, you aren't going to be as stuck on, say, a Braum or something ridiculous like that, because you should be melting through them thanks to the Last Whisper. Right. And I feel a lot of players get stuck up on that. They kind of hear that these three items are BIS, and they oh, enforce yeah. it every lobby, but, you know, it's very lobby dependent. Yeah, I mean, and look at how quickly... Those... Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just saying, look at how quickly that Xerix's Braum went down when Yone just sort of went on him. Like, there was a bit of a delay just because Yone got CC'd, but mm -hmm. all in all, like, they were able to still keep things going very nicely. But unfortunately, oh. though, it seems wait, like, wait, 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 wait a minute. <laughs> wait, the Yumi 2 you diff? Know, I was about to talk about how unfortunate it is to play Yumi with, uh, with excuse me, the different uh, makeshift dummies or whatever. Just mm -hmm. because Yumi can latch onto them and it just feels like the worst feeling in the world. Here, yeah. though, she managed to get her ulti off at the last second. Remember, book fires off one more page at two. So, yeah, it's it's a diff, <laughs> definitely. And that was so good to see. Yeah, just to add to the point, it's because the target dummies don't attack, which don't, which means Yumi doesn't generate additional mana there. But mm. wasn't necessary in that fight. Oh, that's going to be rough, though. Getting the Shroud off the random airdrop item will hurt, but that didn't affect Yumi. It was only the Yon, so that should be pretty okay. Mm -hmm. I believe Fiora gets shut down really hard with Shroud. Yone doesn't seem to care as much. Mm -hmm. Like, I definitely think it would have been a different story if we had mm -hmm. that got one to the right. Should we manages to hang on just a little bit longer. Xerix still trying to do what they can, but it looks like this Fiora may have actually started to fall off here. I think they survived this with maybe like four health, if my math is right, which never trust stream math. Never mind, Fiora does a little bit more. You know what? Fiora's extra right there. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> you see, the way I see it is that Fiora heard me give bad math and went, you know what, mm. Protroid? I got you. I'm just going to kill two more <laughs> units really quick. We'll go back to that voice-activated game. Combo exactly, right exactly. <laughs> Give or take a game or so, because I know I've pleaded for Jins, I've pleaded for Urgots, and they appear in the next lobby I go into. So, you know, you got to watch sure. out for how TFT gets you. Yeah, the Xerix still stuck at level 8, versing these uh, level 9 boards. The Fiora there mm -hmm. is having a lot of trouble in Stage 6. I like... Uh, 
really quickly, I like how we were talking about earlier how you want to keep repositioning your Yone just to make sure he's not getting caught out by anything here. Do you feel like that's being done a bit too blindly for Tactical God here? Because this is, I think, the first time we've seen them starting to really scout before some of these fights are going through and figure out where the Yone is going. And I feel like that's kind of hurt them a little bit, where sometimes mm-hmm. they are managing to dodge things pretty easily, but others, they just kind of move it for the sake of moving it, I feel. Yeah, agreed. Um, definitely could position the scout a little bit more, but I think with the GA on the Yone as the third item, it is a lot more forgiving. True. And yeah, like and... talking about earlier, Fiora going down, so it seems like Chewie is trying to take down Xerix. Currently in Tom Kench will make it yeah. very hard to keep going. And Tom Kench here has just been farming items for all the entirety of stage six and a little bit of stage five. With the binary yeah. airdrop, that's a scary looking board. Pretty much, yeah. You get so much extra value. I mean, we've talked about how Tom Kench has sort of dropped a little bit in priority just because he grants extra stats. When you're running binary airdrop and you're getting so many items for free. I don't care anymore. That's just absolutely absurd. Mm -hmm. Here, though, potentially the last fight. Now they're definitely scouting for each other here. The Brahm in front of the Yone here, hoping to stun the Urgot. Looks like it's going to work out. Oh, He is enforced. It's going to be pretty rough to see, but it will be a great Brahm ulti. Vault Breaker hits the entire team. That could be a big difference maker but so could the Yone getting swallowed up by... Ooh, Ooh, doesn't matter. That's going to be a great win for Tactical God there. Wow, that is two wins in a row for Tactical God. Yeah, are are you noticing a trend so far, I have to say? (laughs) Yeah, that is absolutely crazy. That was a great game there. Yeah, really. The binary airdrop was just providing so much value, but... As we were talking about, IE Last Whisper in that lobby was super good. And the positioning at the end, that's kind of where a lot of skill expression comes out as well. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, we were harping a little bit on positioning here, there, everywhere. But at the same time, you still make it to that last stage of the lobby. There are plenty of things that made that positioning a little bit more forgiving. You talked about the GA to death, so I won't do so anymore. But yeah, no, this was definitely a good place to finish off game two. Speaking of which, we're going to finish things off here. For now, we'll be back after a break for game three. Yep, we'll be right back. Don't touch that browser. Hello, everyone, and we are back on the onset of game three. Players just loading into things right now, and we got a bit of a game on our hands because looking at some of the scores that we have, there are still a few ways this lobby can go. Right. We've definitely seen uh, some strong showings, especially from Tactical God. But yeah, like you said, this the rest of the lobby is uh, kind of similar. We could see a shakeup in the standings for sure. Yeah, definitely. It's still Tactical God's game to lose. I really think there aren't many scenarios where they could not make it to day two at this stage with two first places under their belts. But looking at the middle of the pack here, Ziri, Loi, and Purr are both very close to each other, 9-9 nine, nine, and 8, respectively. So all these mm-hmm. players are looking for big wins, or at the very least, finishing positions above each other to keep things going. Right, and with um, Pita, Jarity, and Jerry uh, as the bottom three, 6-6 six, six, and 5, respectively, we might see some 1st or 8th type of playstyle here. Hey, I mean, I hope to. I hope to. Now's the time you got to pull out all the stops. Here's when you go for the mercenaries. Here's where you go for the crazy streaking boards let's see some crazy stuff Mm -hmm. that's exactly why tournaments are so fun there's kind of a game within the game where you change Mm -hmm. up your play style depending on the standings yeah so far the overall meta though has been what we expected ad comps are still the bread and butter of many of these players but you know sometimes stars align things can work out through jerry Wu has as we've seen going through a couple of different AP comps. It doesn't surprise me too much because they have been practicing them a little bit as they sort of get ready for the mid-set. However, same mm-hmm. time, it hasn't really been working out for them too well here. Here at the Augments, though, oh, here's something that's important, something we haven't really seen too often. I love the scout before selecting Augments. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's, yeah, uh, it's... I feel like similar to Lolly, people, when they don't know what to pick, they scout. But I would encourage scouting no matter what. 
Yeah, it's just one of those little things that I feel like players that are looking to climb should probably pick up just because it helps you sort of identify these things where, huh, this person went assassin heart, this person went makeshift armor. I can now get a better idea of where some of these comps are going to go so I can start planning out another step into the future. Exactly. And I think the big thing here for Lolly specifically was um, they were looking at the protector heart, but scouting mm -hmm. around saw that PETA had a similar start as well. So decided to go with something a little more generic. Yeah, and definitely Frill the Hunt one, really solid pickup really no matter what comp it's in. Anyone can use that little tiny bit of extra healing. So all in all, can't go wrong. For sure. With something like Thrill of the Hunt 2, you're giving up a different gold augment, right? But yeah. Thrill of the Hunt 1, I feel like, is just one of the best. Yeah, it's always that weird little fun game of trying to figure out which is the best relative to the others. And I mean, with all silver augments on this early game board, you just can feel a little bit more confident about how things are going. Also, we're two out of three mercs, so I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that in my hopes and dreams. <laughs> yeah, I would love to see a big merc cash out. And we see here that tempo might be a little bit slow. We are seeing yep. uh, some Yordles. We were seeing other protectors. So maybe a Merc game is in the works. Yeah, I am also interested in looking at how Purr is going to be playing this with the Assassin Heart pickup. A lot of the time you want to try going as generic as possible with your starting augment. To me, this can either say that they were being given, say, three different hearts, which certainly can happen. And certainly some higher level players can grumble about that. Or you could see something more along the lines of, no, I really just want to go Assassins here. This is the way I'm going. So yes, you kind of open yourself up to that early on. Yes, it paints target on your back, but it can really help you get into some high roll moments. For sure. And committing earlier gives you a better chance to place higher. Um, also gives you a better chance to place lower <laughs> going something generic. But very, very sharp people. sword you got there. Yeah, exactly. I do love the early committing. and. Um, you know, not always forcing, but a bit of a commitment to one or two different outs can help a lot. Yeah, that definitely makes sense to me. Jarity here has slammed a lot of items on this rat. I really do like the Death Blade. I feel like it is not as good as it kind of used to be here, but there are still a great number of comps that can make advantage of it. Urgot comes to mind immediately. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yone as well. I, I love the DB. Um, people aren't excited about it as much because it's not stacking anymore. It's the flat AD. But I still think mm -hmm. it's an amazingly strong item. Yeah, especially if you can get some early two stars here early on. Just because, remember, it, scar it scales with star level. You aren't going to be restricted to anything like these crazy streaks. So if you just happen to have a Twitch 2 here at 2-3, you're just mm -hmm. getting an extra huge amount of AD. Right. And that is so strong in stage two. Ooh. Do you see a couple of protectors on the bench and a Twitch two there? Lolly seems this to be gonna leaning be a bit scary. towards challengers. PETA also currently running a bit more of a mixed board here. Doesn't really have too many crazy things aside from some pretty crazy free cost units and two stars. But Ooh. look at their bench. That's a bunch of protectors <laughs> very close to both the Garen and the Cassidy as well. So Seems like everyone's interested in how the protectors are doing. Yeah, for sure. And I, I think in these higher ELO lobbies, if you aren't playing protect protectors and it doesn't grief your econ, it is a good idea to hold on to certain units. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially remember, like we're still living in a meta where Kogma can be played at any time without warning. It's very terrifying. So as a result, just holding on to a few things that might build into that comp, it A, mm -hmm. opens yourself up for the possibility of moving into it if you get really lucky, or B, just denies it from other people. Exactly. I do see Jarity here at level 5. Another 2-3 level 5. Mm -hmm. I love to see the fast tempo. Hey, it's aggressive. It's, very, it's looking to maintain your win streak into Krugs. Every little advantage helps. For sure. The Leona picked up here. Um, they're definitely looking to slam like a Morello, some sort of item here. Yeah, I think Morellos would probably be the safest one just because Echo is one of the premier holders of it at this stage. The same time, though, I also feel a little bit awkward about it just because even though it is going to be effective when the units are grouped up, and actually I take this back, it looks like pretty much everyone is very grouped up here. So. Yeah. 
it seems like most of these scenarios should turn out pretty fine for Lolly. Mm -hmm. And starting off with like a glove cloak and a belt, you just feel like you need to slam something no matter what for Scarcel. Yeah, and I was about to talk about how this board looked a little bit weaker to me. That Misfortune really threw me for a loop. <laughs> yeah, Misfortune actually slept on quite a bit, in my opinion. There's been some three-star reroll Misfortune comms popping up that are quite strong. Yeah, it's also funny to remember, too, that she was, alongside Gangplank, slated to receive some buffs towards her three-star variant, and mm -hmm. those were pulled just before they hit live because, as you've kind of said, Misfortune is really strong and doesn't really need that kind of gentle nudge buff to remind players that she exists. Right. And switching over to Tactical God's view here, another what looks like five loss streak here. Yeah, also running the Urals to maintain good economy. It looks like they're going to be able to hit 50 gold regardless of win or loss here going into the Krug round. The only thing that's scary is that they are losing more health than we're used to them seeing lose. In the last mm -hmm. game, I remember they were around like 73 health at this stage, and this is definitely on a loss going to be below that. Don't get me wrong, they have proven that they're able to still perform and play around low health totals. It's not necessarily a death sentence, but it is still concerning, even though, like we talked about before, they're pretty safe. Right. Not as graceful as the last few games, but... 66, still not too bad. Krug round will allow us to reset, reanalyze, figure where things are going. Jarity still hanging at the top, making good use of that early level five. Mm -hmm. And it's it's actually, in this meta, I feel like it's always been kind of a win streak, win streak meta. But it's really nice to see three lost streaks in a row and, well, two wins, maybe a, even a third for Tactical God here. Yeah, we'll have to see how it goes just yet. We can't get too excited about the tactical god. They've already proven their prowess, but there is still time for other players to tell the stories of their own. Right. There are some hungry players in this lobby looking to make that cutoff for the finals. Yeah, and like I said, there is a pretty close middle of the pack, and even then, Jerdy or, or Jerry Wu can still get some pretty crazy stuff if they can rank high enough. So I do think there is still chances for a lot of these players to make the top four, even if first might be out of their reach. I, I totally agree. And top four is all you need to make it to the finals here. Um, Pita would also be another player to watch here, really vying for that number one spot this game. Yeah, I do also like the Chalice Slam here onto Tactical God. It doesn't have like 35 anymore. It's been nerfed back down to 30. But it is still just a good generic item to slam just because of yeah. how much AP it gives to so many different units. <laughs> For sure. I love the previous patch, Riot, kind of reminding everyone that this item exists and, and then, then reverting quietly back. Quietly rolling it back, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All in all, really, really nice to see. And on top of that, too, for like a lot of these more AD-focused comps, like we are assuming is going to be played here by Tactical God from the slam of the Last Whisper, it is one of those good, effective ways to get rid of a tier, just to spread out some additional power. Yeah, for sure. And it was last game, I believe, we did see a Jin comp that used two chalices on Jin. Yeah, so it's still quite strong. Item. Yeah, and it also allows units like the Orianna to even serve as a secondary carry if they're given enough AP as well, just because yeah. of how much damage you get into the enemy team or shielding you go onto your allies, depending on where the ball doth decide to land. So all in all, things are looking pretty good for this Chalice, no matter which direction Tactical God appears to take with it. For sure. Big uh, difference in boards here, actually. Xerix went 6, rolled down to 20, has a Warwick 2, is looking very, very strong. Yeah, Warwick, I have to say, is pretty scary, but I don't think this is going to be where these items are going to end up. I know that the Warwick is usually an item holder for someone like an Urgot in these Chemtech comps. I'll put a pin in that just because we're back to the Ooh. augments. More interesting stuff. Trade sector certainly the safest, but a good handshake is always welcome. Goes for the immediate board strength here. Not a bad choice. I would have also considered trade sector as well. Yeah. Well, like I said, I feel like Trade Sector can apply no matter what you're going to be going. It's pretty safe for a game free. Tactical God has has enough points in the, the standings right now to be able to take a bigger risk. And like we talked about before, it's a crazy increase in power up front. 
And because mm-hmm. so many of these units double dip in both AD and AP, it's even more powerful. Right, 100%. Caught a quick glimpse of Lolly there. Uh, we were talking about how they were two out of three mercenaries. Looks like they were able to play mercenaries starting uh, the beginning of the stage. Yeah, we'll be curious to see how that can really move forward here because, again, one wrong move mercenaries, you can go down pretty quick. For sure. This bench to me for a tactical, though, is kind of looking maybe like a Jin at the moment with the Trisana holding yep. these items, the Scion Blitz and the Kogma Sniper. Yeah, all that seems pretty, pretty familiar to me as well. We'll have to see exactly where things go, and it might just depend on what units are found at the end of the day. But, I mean, all things considered, Scion is going to be doing some pretty nice stuff just in any comp he's in. Yes, he's going to cost two, but tons of CC is going to be behind him. Mm -hmm. With the the nerfs this patch, they didn't nerf how quickly he gets his first cast off, right? So the Scion is still quite useful earlier on. It's just uh, he won't be ulting like three or two or three times a fight. And and that's the same thing that we saw happen to Braum this patch as well. Both of them were toned a little bit down in terms of subsequent casts. So you are still going to have those high impact initial casts, but you're not going to get into these scenarios where you're going to be going absolutely insane. And it seems like, (laughs) seems like that might be a little tilt here. (laughs) Flashing the menu there a bit. (laughs) Yeah, still, still plenty of time. And I mean, like really, oh, that was interesting. Another quick little pivot around here, and a five Imperial Ooh. is going to be the play. I, I like this a lot. Ooh, me too. I love to see this. Uh, there was a slight nerf for Imperial, but I do feel like they're in a good place now. I do feel like they were yeah. overtuned, so I love seeing Imperial builds. On top of that, too, I like the items that we have on the Talon right now. I feel like mm-hmm. one of the things that Talon struggles the most is just going to be running in and getting CC'd, so putting in Quicksilver is going to be very useful. Now you really, I guess, in an optimal scenario, want another bow, but there are other ways you can build out this talent. For sure. Like you mentioned, the RFC, IE, and the QSS combo is the classic, but there are many ways to build the talent as well. Yeah, plenty of time to get things going, and as we were talking about, Imperial may be nerfed, but I feel like it's one of those things where the nerf was done in order to protect the integrity kind of TFT because it was kind of really out there as we were discussing last night. But now it's kind of more in line with some other more high A S tier comps, depending on the situation. Right. And I wonder if Per 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 stays here to reroll for Talon or if they're just going to push levels. I feel like now that they have the Imperial 5, they kind of have the freedom to try to stay here a little bit more. I do like the quick swap over from the Echo into the Blitzcrank, just because Blitzcrank is going to be providing the protector shield that's going to be keeping Cyan alive even longer, as well as just helping clear up the backline for the Talon. Yep, they already have the Assassin Heart in there, so Mm -hmm. Talon with the IE is still doing a lot of work. Yeah, and we could still see something nutty at level 7, Nate trying to slot more Assassins back in, but really... Right now, the name of the game is just being as strong as you can. I feel like this is a pretty good increase. I agree. I think maybe if there were five to six talons on the bench currently, mm-hmm. it would be all right. But pushing for levels might uh, might be the smarter move here. Yeah, going to be curious to see exactly what happens here. It might come off the back of what we see on these wolves because we're due for another bow. It would be exciting. But, I mean, if you get a rod, you could still build a Ginsu's, which talent can work with fine enough Mm -hmm. we'll have to see here oh a nico helps quite a bit indeed it does and you also have a sword for a giant slayer in case talent gets stuck on something that's a little bit beefier so all in all these are good options being thrown in just going to be a matter of which ones are taken at the end of the day Right, and it's a another IE as well. If he does want to greed for the RFC, can go into something like four assassin, five imperial. That will certainly be really quite nice, and it looks like the decision has been made to go in mm-hmm. for the levels at this stage. Nice. It goes for the scrap here. Yep, greeting a little bit, which is fine because they've leveled up here to increase their board strength. 
we did see a little hover that kind of concerned me a little bit more. It looked like they were about to slam a Last Whisper on town, which I'm not really about. Mm -hmm. The armor shred there is not going to be too helpful, as Talon does mostly AP damage. Yeah, Blitzcrank. Oh, the Blitzcrank Imperial is going to try to do what it can <laughs> at this stage here. Some pretty big punches actually coming from right? the Golem Fists, but is it going to be enough, unfortunately? I was actually quite surprised by how much damage the Blitz was doing. It's so fun to watch. Yeah, really, Imperial Spat is just one of those options where you can get some pretty creative uh, behaviors going. Just like how you can get some neat things with Academy, especially if you were to find, say, something like, oh, I don't know, um, the augment that gives you like 90% of your mana back after your initial cast. Like, right. <laughs> there are so many of these little interactions in TFT that can only be unlocked by a certain number of doors being opened. And I feel like throwing an Imperial spat around is probably one of the fun things to sort of discover. Yeah, I have, um, I've seen an Imperial Fiora do a lot of work. Oh, yeah. Especially because you can just slap whatever items you want on. And Speaking then... of Fiora, despite being yeah. fairly low health, Peta is currently already has a Fiora too. Doesn't make it out of here alive though, so this is going to be a pretty rough loss for them. I think at 4-2, they're not going to be losing that much. Probably have like around Ooh. 2 health left, maybe? Let's find out. Hey, 5, close enough. Yeah. With 2, give or take 3, you know, that's how math works. Looks like I don't really know why... On. Yeah. I don't really know why I, as a commentator, knowing that is terrible is a terrible decision at all times to do math. You let people in production who are in the background, <laughs> they whisper those secrets into your ear. But like, man, math's hard. Oh, for sure, for sure. But we do know that they are holding on for another round. The Fiora was upgraded to two star, but it wasn't itemized for Peta here. So yes, yeah, certainly they'll have to make some drastic uh, decisions right now. Yeah, Tactical God also looking a little bit. It worse for wear, but did just hit an Urgot, so that will be a pretty big spike for their board. Mm -hmm. And um, Purper here with the Scion pair, that's really huge. I think hitting a Scion 2 in this comp is very, very important. Yeah, all that will be pretty good for just sort of keeping things going. One thing I have to fault them on, though, is that I feel like they haven't really been scouting too much, because at this point, I feel like the town is getting into some weird positions here, where it wasn't able to get anywhere near the damage threat of this misfortune, as Chewie just shows up to get hit by a meteor, that's fine, it happens, totally <laughs> Oh no, and Pita is out. Oh wow, doesn't even get to see their last augment, that's always one of the roughest feelings. Yeah, it did seem like they struggled quite a bit in this lobby, it just, it could have been one of those games. Yeah, will be rough to see. That loss is going to be probably what seals it for Peter. We'll have to see how some of these other things go, but that is going to be pretty rough at this stage here. And I think that was a bow that was just picked up here. Uh, I don't believe he was able to get the bow here as the second pick. Uh, we'll take a quick look. But speaking in terms of the rest of the lobby, um, we have Jerry Wu and Jerry who both need to place really well to stay in this thing. And um, they're currently top two, top three. Yeah, I can even pivot over to Jerry Wu to see how they're doing right now. Heck, we get another Fjord. It seems like this has been a pretty recurring theme over the course of this set. And we also see a Tome of Traits on the bench here. And please correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is the new Tome of Traits, correct? Or is we're still we're still on the old one? I think we're waiting for the last patch to get right, the you're Tome correct. of Traits. For, for those but, of you who um, don't know, the way that Tome of Traits works is that Presently, if you have five units on your board, it picks two traits based on what you have and two that are just completely random. Very mm -hmm. soon, that is going to change around. Oh, that Blitzcrank didn't want that GA. That's going to hurt <laughs> quite a bit. Uh-oh. At least it's a Blitzcrank one. He'll be able to yeah. remake that. Yeah, no harm, no foul, but still, that certainly does hurt a little tiny bit. <laughs> yeah, and you can see... Um... Not the happiest with that here, but at least it was not a Blitzcrank too. Yeah, last augments coming in here. Challenger Quest is pretty fun if you're looking to sort of go deeper into this Fiora, but oh, I was yep. going to say, that's just going to be the way it goes. <laughs> that's exactly what's happening here. Just splashing in two Challengers. The Challenger spat gives you the option to go for a four, which helps quite a bit mm -hmm. with the Fiora carry. Yeah, the one reason why I was sort of 
thinking about bodyguard and entertaining the idea was that it's a really nice way to get the scion in here for even more cc but as we've kind of talked mm. about before it's not always easy to justify the amount of unit slots that unit takes up exactly and i, I like i like this board here right the Val's gonna get dropped for a fourth challenger here and now focusing more on the fiora yeah Fiora's just I... one of those units right if you see her in the shop you just hold her on the bench yeah, super easy to do, can, as we've said so many times, can take so many items, so it's easy to pivot around multiple different scenarios with her. One thing that I'll say is that I'm actually not too crazy about putting the Static Shiv onto the Fiora, excuse me, not the Fiora, onto the Quinn, just because I feel like it's something I would rather see on this Orianna alongside the Challenger Spat, which is conspicuously absent here at this stage, keeping this yeah. board at three Challenger instead of four. I was about to mention that they didn't slam the challenger spot here. Maybe they assumed um, they would beat Xerix here, even without it, but that does look like a big misplay. Yeah, Xerix is going to be able to win very convincingly here at this stage, also going challenger, so we are seeing some signs of contention. Mm -hmm. Oh, but gets the Jace. I, that's, that's kind of huge. I, I would have slammed, mm -hmm. personally, this challenger spot on Orianna. Um, but Jerry Wu, just a better player, knew the Jace was coming. So perhaps exactly. gonna go for a challenger Jace. Yeah, it does work out pretty well. One thing I'll say too is that we do also have the tome of traits to be used. I'm kind of curious about when that will be at this case, because even though there's a pretty nice health total here that can be played around with, like we talked about many a time, the sooner you commit, the better. Mm -hmm. For now, it's just lost power sitting on your bench. Two gloves here, and a two Jace Jaces. <laughs> okay, yeah. maybe it was the right play to just sack that round, hold the Chali Spat for Jace. Yeah, we'll have to see just how things can shape up. Jace doesn't really have too many items I think he'd really want on this bench right now, but it's still going to be a viable item holder. Mm -hmm. The unfortunate thing about the GA slam is you could probably itemize Jace here and put a TG on the Fiora, some Thieves Gloves. Mm. But now he'll have to... The Titans. The Titans is quite good here. Yeah, I like the Titans. One thing that I'll say too is that there could have been a world where you could see something like a Jeweled Gauntlet just to try to get things going for Fiora. I think the Morellos on the Seraphine is a bit safer, but really at this stage, I don't really think Jerry Wu needs safe. I think they need some kind of bold move, but also... That's pretty stacked Fiora you're going up against there. Yeah, and this is Lolly's second time with the Fiora too, with those exact items. Um, oh, the Challenger spatula from the Tome of Traits. And a Jace hey. too. <laughs> and a Jace too. That now is this be... is looking quite spicy. It is, but the, the one downside that we have to remember though is that there are still going to be no real items on this Jace. I like the QS mm. slam here just to give him more attack speed, be able to corner him, but really you're going to need to see some kind of big play here for the last option. We also need to see the challenger emblem slotted into for the six. This is going to be absolutely huge. And wait, I didn't realize a binary airdrop was at play. Yeah, now it looks like their board is actually quite stable here. The QSS is also a really good slam on the Jace because of... Um... He, he has a bit of a casting animation, mm -hmm. and as a challenger, he casts quite a bit. Getting interrupted during that animation pretty much wastes the whole spell. Pretty much indeed, but all in all things, looking better here. Maybe a little bit close as, unfortunately, the Jace only rolled the Onyx Spark. He really needs to roll an AD-focused item in order to get a lot of power going. But mm -hmm. all in all, things are looking pretty good. Xerix actually went down, so that's going to be... A very rough thing for them, especially considering their their closeness to the top of the leaderboard. Mm -hmm. For sure. Switching over to Purple Purse perspective. As hey, a look. Holly holding the Imperial spot. Yeah. I was going to say, look who decided to move out of talent at this stage. I think it sort of goes into what we were talking about before how the move away from the talent tr trying to reroll or do anything crazy is going to be huge. Okay. Then Nikos comes in as well. <laughs> I don't want to be Jarity coming in at this stage right now. Is this going to be a pretty terrifying... Ooh, look at that. That is just so nice to see. QSS, IE, two very good items. And then you have the 135% damage 
from the Imperial spot there. Yeah, along four with Knife as well. Edge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Knife Edge, four assassins. This is going to be so much damage coming in here from the Sakali. I'm really liking the board. The QSS there really makes it because Akali is such an RNG dependent champion that um, if she gets stunned or if she just gets one shot here, just um, he he would have no chance, right? But the QSS kind of mm-hmm. mitigates all of that. Yeah, Tactical God also got eliminated. A pretty surprising showing considering how, again, they were the first place king of the past couple of rounds, but they do still have a lot of points under their belt. That's not necessarily a death sentence for them just yet. We'll find out more about the specific standings as this game goes on, of course. We'll keep you posted if something crazy does happen, but for now, we'll see how it goes. I like how the Scion's just becoming a bit of an item holder here. Like, yeah, you can relive the old Glory Day Scion. You can have a Jewel Gauntlet. Sure, have a Ruins Hurricane. What do I care? It sounds like fun. Don't hurt yourself. Like, yeah, all this is pretty nice to watch. <laughs> yeah, it's Runan Turkey is just a cloak for the Scion, and yeah, yeah. JG is just a glove. <laughs> he he attacks faster and he takes less damage from magic damage sources. So that that that's all you need for sure. But this is oh <laughs> the victor. We well, saw the same thing, right? <laughs> yeah, getting instantly bopped by the Sakali too. Yeah. Oh, but the Urgot with the mutant spat is actually able to pull it off here. That is going to be pretty huge. Also, I believe that's an instant injection for Chewie as well. So that is going to be another reason why this Urgot's going to be ripping in insane damage. Chemtech really mm. can be a great counter to a lot of assassin boards. Just because if you can't kill them instantaneously, they are going to be able to buff in with that damage resistance, with that extra little bit of healing as well. So that will be a bit of a problem here for Purr. But they are right. continuing this meat shot approach that we've seen work out for them so well in the qualifying rounds as well. They are on the cusp of a top four, but even a fifth might be good enough for them. Yeah, we'll definitely have to see. And uh, Chewie's other augments were Chemtech Emblem and Chemtech Heart, I believe they were. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's just the best you could ask for. Yeah, the lots of gems, many tech. Here. Yeah, that is going to be really rough here just because Sign is the only source of frontline, but who cares if everyone's dead? Kali just eats Fiora for dinner. My goodness. Yeah, Purr is certainly only on one health remaining at this stage, but they're trying to take everyone else down with them. <laughs> for sure. The positioning will be so important, as you mentioned. And we see... Oh, okay. Yeah. Argoyles. Well, you see, this is funny. This is when you want to tell the Scion, hey, listen, I know you're having fun with that nice Runin's Hurricane I got you, but I really have an important item. I think <laughs> it's going to make great use for this team. And Scion just goes, no, I want a Runin's. I want to be the main carry here. Let me spread out my Imperial damage. It hurts a little bit. There's other good holders for it, but, you know, it's how it kind of goes at this stage of the game. They do pick up the Scion in the shop, maybe considering rebuild. Rebuild, rebuild. Oh, I, oh I there you go. <laughs> okay. Voice activated game, everybody. Yep, magnetic remover from the dragon. Just ask. And the stone plate is going to be huge here. Definitely, because this is really going to be a solo front line at this stage. Deciding between the jeweled gauntlet and the last whisper, I not the last whisper, runes. I like this mm-hmm. extra pause. Yep. Goes for on the Samira. Yep. I think that's a pretty good choice. A little bit of extra damage there from all Imperials running five. Yeah. It's not bad to put on Samira at all. There's a world where it could have also gone on Shaco too, but considering how it's still a Shaco one, I doubt it. And wow, mm. we just wow. keep seeing two star five costs get <laughs> deleted. This Akali is putting in so much work. Yeah, It's just so too. satisfying to see that immediately. It's a deletion right away. Yeah, but that too, Purr is looking pretty solid right now. They are currently now in fourth place, actually, following after Jaredy's defeat there. So they're very middle of the pack right now. It's just going to depend on where they play into at this next coming stage. For sure. There's a little bit of uh, matchmaking luck here, as mm-hmm. long as they don't rotate into um, Chewie, who's running that Chemtech comp with both Urgot and Victor. Yeah, which matchmaking wise is certainly possible. We could see that run end things pretty abruptly, but even if it is a loss, they do have a slight one HP advantage over Jerry, and Jerry Woo is also quite low as well. So we will see how things are shaking out. Okay. Rotates into Jerry. This will decide fourth uh fourth place. 
Yeah, this is probably the best scenario they could have got into. The Battle of the Huge Scions time. in the front line, but the back line is still all about Ooh. the Akali. Yeah, and there is no one surviving two hits from that Akali. Oh, Lolly is eliminated as well. Yeah, Jarity goes down lower, so it's going to be a top four for Lolly, but this is really something that Per needed. They were sort of very close middle of the pack for tiebreaker versions reasons previously on, but here they can really get things going. Oh, for sure. This might be exactly what Per needed to qualify for the finals. Yeah, we'll have to see. Jerry Wu is still in this, as is Chewy, who is streaking and is still probably one of the biggest threats that Per 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 can truly face. Here's going to be the ghost of Chewy to sort of see how things are going. Who knows? Maybe the Scion itemization change could be a bit of a diff. Maybe you get a better luck here killing the victor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Akali alts. Oh, and it's a win. He's able to take down the Chemtech comp. It's more it's than a win, it's secures. a second. Secures the second place. Yeah, Jerry Wu going down is going to be pretty huge, but now we have two players win streaking, and I think it's all just going to come down to fight RNG at the end of the day. Yeah, for sure. He, I think he's going about it correctly, instantly eliminating the victor and then trying to work on the Ear God afterwards. We'll see if um, Chewie is able to outposition at the last second. Yeah, we will have to see just where all this stuff sort of ends up. It really is Chewie's game to lose, though. Just because, again, you're able to sort of recognize where the Sakali is. You can try to move stuff around. I guess the one downside, though, is that if you're Chewie, you need to move like two, three units around your board. Per really just needs to move one. Yeah. 100%. Both players on fire, figuratively and in-game. We'll see what happens here. Both yeah, I do... I love the Victor frontline here just to try to make it so at least one cast get off. It will land the at this goes stage. Off. Ooh, and that does it. Good enough. That is exactly what you want to see. It's these little adaptations that can help you win big in a lot of these fights. So that is really just enormous at the end of the day here. We are going to be talking a little bit here just to make sure that we have all the last little calculations to see who is going to be making it here into day two from at least this side of the bracket, at least figure out where all these points are. But this is absurd mm. to watch. Yeah, great showing, especially from um, the players like Per we were talking about needed to place really high here. We'll see if that has an impact on the standings going into finals. Yeah, looking at where some of these points are at this stage, I have to ceremoniously look at my phone really quickly. It looks like Chewy is going to be walking out of here with a first so far in this lobby with 21 points. That is going to be pretty huge, all things considered. That's immediately followed by Tactical God, I believe, at 19. Yep. And I think we are still calculating a few more things. So two more spots are up for grabs. But so far, what do you think about those two advancements so far? Because Tactical God played phenomenally all throughout this tournament. Well, I feel like Chewie kind of was always there, just creeping. Mm -hmm. I really got to give it up to Chewie there. Even like we saw the last fight, they were able to just outposition so well. And they've been playing so consistently where Tactical God got a bot four in the last game. Chewie has been top fouring every single game and actually finished on top with uh, the most qualifier points. And we're now hearing what our top four advancing are going to be from Lobby 2. There are going to be once more, Chewy and Tactical God at the top of the top two, followed by Purr, Purr, Purr. You get all the purrs this time yeah. around, as well as Lolly, who I believe was Proto. So all in all, this is going to be a very strong showing here from Lobby 2 with also some surprises as well. Jerry Wu very narrowly yeah. missed out on the top four, finishing with 11 points to Proto's 14. Yeah, and like you mentioned, Purr, 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 Purr. Pol yeah, barely yeah, qualifying go. with uh, 13 points, actually managed to qualify uh, third place going into the finals. Yeah, I got to say, everything here on the Lobby 2 side things has been phenomenal. I think Lobby 1 is a little bit behind, so we don't know all the details around them just yet. You should probably just keep an eye out inside of the Aegis Discord for more updates. That's where you can go. I'm sure someone in the Twitch chat is going to really quickly send a link to that for anyone who has just sort of stumbled on here and want to learn more about what Aegis does. But all in all, this has been a really great way for us to wrap up day one. Yeah, it's just a super fun matches to watch. Um, the amount of skill in each of these lobbies is just outstanding. 
it's not often you get to see a lot of people from different regions play together. So really grateful yeah. to be able to see that. And everybody has been stepping up. We've been seeing a lot of cracked boards here. Definitely, definitely. And I think we're running out of things to talk about. So before we do go, Dan, FPO, tell me, where can people find you on the internet? Oh, I play I play this game quite a bit in, on NA as FPO. You'll <laughs> you'll recognize me there. Um, you can follow my Twitter FPO underscore TFT. I also stream under uh, FPO TFT as well. Yeah, and, for me. Uh, what about you, Protroid? Oh yes, for me, Protroid Twitter Twitch got it pretty locked down at this point. Not many people want to make a name off of a card game they made when they were in fifth grade. So I, I got like a pretty good uh, stranglehold on the Protroid market. Regardless of all of that, in addition to just hearing more from us, you can hear more from Aegis by following them on Twitter, Aegis Esports GG, as well as joining the Discord server to get involved with more tournaments like this and get updates for when we go into tomorrow's games at 5 p.m. EST, 2 p.m. PST. So all in all, I think that's all we got to talk about tonight. You got one more word, Dan? One more word. What oh, I'm good. You said it all, man. You got it. I said it all? Okay, awesome. <laughs> We're going to take oh. a wrong, long break here. See you all tomorrow. Good night, everybody. Good night, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in.